Zambia may not be the worst country in Africa where poaching occurs, but um, but but poaching is a problem. It's a, it's a it's a global crisis. Um, it's something that the United States is uh, is very seized with. Our president. Um, uh, you know, made this a, a national security priority, and we are looking for ways to, um, you know, to help African countries in particular deal with the poaching crisis. Everything that the United States uh, does in, in this regard is designed to support and help African countries. Um, this can't be our solution. It can't be our, uh, you know, the United States, um, you know, imposing a solution on on you or uh, other countries. It's really. Um, it's, it's up to Zambia to, um, you know, to, to, to fix its problem with poaching, and we'll help in any way that we can, frankly. So how is it that elephants can benefit a people, community, and a country? And one of the biggest ways is, is through tourism. If, if that tourism industry is successful in attracting tourists, and if the revenues are appropriately charged and distributed in a way that not only sustains the resource, but provides benefits to the local people who have to put up with very large gray beasts in their garden every evening. Uh, in, the, in the 80s, Zambia alone had 13,000 black rhinos. Within three years, they had zero. And um, we uh, congratulate Zambia. It is, it is one of the only countries that has successfully brought a species back to a wild condition with the help of South Africa who donated black rhinos to North Luangwa. They have successfully regained a number of 27. Unfortunately, that comes at great expense. It's, it's much harder to put an animal back. It's much more expensive and much harder to put an animal back than it is to keep it there in the first place. So um, that was a very costly intervention, and, and we congratulate the country that they have managed to keep them safe and have not had an animal killed, a black rhino killed due to poaching in North Longwa. Uh, morning. Morning. Uh, my question is uh, based on climate change. So um, do you provide uh, any support uh, in terms of climate change adaptation and mitigation in the wildlife sector in Zambia? Um, <clears throat> Yes, the answer is we, we do. It's actually not through the Fish and Wildlife Service. It's through uh, uh, the US Agency for International Development. And Anna Tonis, who's sitting at the back of the room, is kind of the officer in charge of the program. Um, so what we're, what we're actually focused on um, is, um, is preserving Zambia's forest, uh, which uh, you know, is, is, is partly to mitigate um, the effects of climate change. Uh, but it's also related to what we're talking about this morning as well, because if, if, you, if you don't protect the habitat for the animals, then the animals are that much more at risk. Um, so the, the short answer is uh, we do have programs uh, that, um, that are designed to help Zambia preserve its forests and in the process um, uh, assist with, uh, with, with climate change. Yeah. How do you think the lift on the ban of uh, these great cuts, the big cuts, is going to affect our nation when it comes to wildlife population? With Specific um, respect to lifting the uh, the ban on big cat hunting in in Zambia, um, I think it would be fair to say that we're we're concerned that um, uh, that there isn't an accurate uh, count that we we really don't know uh, just how many lions there are, how many leopards there are, uh, and whether in fact the population can sustain hunting. Um, and so that's our, our principal concern that we've expressed to the government is that um, that that that's what needs to be to, to be sort of determined ahead of time. Um, and then also there, you know, and I think M Michelle alluded to this is that are there sufficient resources in place to monitor that hunting uh, effectively um, and to ensure that it's not being abused? So there's a lot of debate that is unresolved on the impact of which animals you remove, and then this confounded especially with lions by this issue that removing uh, males from within a pride leads to infanticide. The new male kills off all the youngsters Absolutely. to bring the female back into breeding condition so that he can sire his own offspring. Um, so, and that, so that leads to you've not only removed the male, but by knock-on effects, you've removed the whole litter of youngsters and she has to breed again and then wait the gestation period to have the new ones. So 
Biologically, we have a lot of questions. How many have you got, and what is the impact of the ones you remove? Those remain questions for many species in many countries, not just Africa, but we do it for ourselves as well in, in setting our quotas within the United States.